Hi everybody, just want to show you this game which features a fairly typical attack in the Sicilian. And we're just going to run through the game quite quickly to start with, see how it pans out, see a couple of the ideas that are played in the game, and then we're going to bring it back to a couple of critical moments where errors were made with the idea being that they're going to help us avoid this type of mistake in our own games. Okay, so from this position, g5 was played, just advancing pawns, the idea being that we want to break open this position as quickly as possible, open lines against king and get him checkmated. Obviously the knight's attacked here as well, so he gets out of the way, which is probably sensible. And then the h pawn advances. Knight d4. If the knight comes into the centre and hits the undefended f3 bishop. So that moves to g4. Which also pins the knight against the rook. Limiting uh, black's movements there. e6. Which I'm guessing was played just to break the pin there. And then the h-pawn bravely continues, h5, and then c4 is played, probably to open up, try and open up uh, the c-file against the king, get some counter-play, some counter-attacking there, got the bishop looking down on this position. Now, one of the things that that pawn was doing on c5 was protecting this knight, now, the knight is still protected by the bishop on g7, so it's not in any danger at the moment, but that becomes key later on, so just bear that in mind. And then we get h takes g6, h takes g6 back, f takes is no better, because then we get bishop takes, and we see that the bishop will have to retake, since there's no c5. And when bishop takes e6, gets very nasty um, for black because no f7 pawn there, so we check. And you've got king there or rook there. And you, you can examine the position, it's not good. But anyway, we've got this h file nice and open here. So the queen swings across, queen h2. Front and checkmate, and imagine black starts sweating quite a bit here. So he makes a, an escape square for his king. White comes in, h7 check, just kick that king about a bit. King to f8, and then white has quite a nice idea here. White can't come in any further to the position, say on h8, because this bishop's defending it. But this bishop is also needed to defend the knight in d4. So white plays bishop takes d4. And when he recaptured, which he needs to do, otherwise it's going to be a piece down. e5 interferes with the defense of h8. So black wants to try and clear that as quickly as possible. d takes e5. And then white brings his knight into play. You can see here that. Queen h8 check, king e7. You can't come in here because the knight's guarding it, so that's no use at the moment. So knight e4, e takes f4, which opens up uh, the bishop's side of h8 again. And then the knight comes in here, forking both rooks but also attacking f7, so queen takes f7, checkmate is threatened. Black finds knight e5, which is multi-purpose. Queen takes knight is threatened, knight takes bishop is threatened, and the f7 square is defended, so that's quite a nice move. But notice also that the knight to this square has blocked off his bishop again, which means that h8 is available again. So white takes this opportunity now. Also knight being there means f6 becomes available after this. Queen to h8, king to e7. And then this piece is hanging. 
So we get knight takes c8 check, queen recaptures, queen comes into f6 with check. The king's got to go to the d file. If it goes back to the f file, then rook to h8 is checkmate. I'll show you that one. King goes there, rook checkmate. So king to d7, d takes c4, and now you see that we've got rook takes uh, bishop check is threatened. So how do you defend that? Well, in the game, black played a really bad move, played queen takes c4, and after queen takes knight, he resigned. Because what he's going to win is... Uh, piece on the next move but if he'd played say queen to c5 then you get rook takes queen takes rook comes across pinning a queen against a king queen takes for rook because there's nothing better notice the bishop on g4 is still hanging so we don't take with a king we take with a bishop and it's a sorry state of affairs for black it's completely lost right so we'll go back a bit now and have a look at uh, an earlier position okay and this is the earlier position this is where black actually makes his losing move we've got knight take c8 check and their natural tendency this, this is the kind of thing that comes about by routine thinking you've had one of your pieces taken you're in check you can easily take the piece that's doing the checking, so that's what you do. But in this position, that loses. After the queen takes a knight and the queen f6 check, we saw that black loss pretty much immediately. If black was to play the only other legal move, king d7, then he's actually absolutely fine. Okay, he's a rook for two pawns down at the moment, but if we look at the situation, this knight is on pretty, the queen is, and this bishop is. So he's going to win something back. I mean, say we defend with uh, bring a queen to h3 to get the queen out of the way and defend this bishop then we can recapture the knight and uh, we'll level on material so we'll just show that king takes there I and mean, if we have something like d takes c4 which looks like it's setting a pin up against the queen we're able to escape by giving check and then bringing the queen out of the way so that's the first example of how routine thinking which in this case was the knight is taking a rook check it can be recaptured so we just automatically recapture it it often pays to look at alternatives here the automatic move lost so hopefully uh, that's something that we can bear in mind in our games now I'm going to show an earlier position from the this game as well which is this one so the queen's come over to h2 and black's just moved the rook from f8 to e8 creating the space for the king to go to now we saw the idea of a bishop taking the knight bishop retaking the e5 blocking off the h8 square and maybe you notice in the game I tried to skate over it quite quickly but white played this move so we can see the point in the bishop takes knight bishop takes bishop e5 idea but what was the idea of this move if we look at what it does it forces the king to a safer square and that's not really in white's interest in fact it's nowhere near white's interests so if we take that move back and we play things in a different move order then we get a much better uh, much better idea so 
bishop takes d4 straight away bishop takes here e5 and now we're not threatening queen h7 check and king there and then into h8 we're just threatening to go straight in and checkmate black and just changing those move orders around or not playing the tempting check on h7 this position is completely one for white because of the weakness of h8 now I can imagine that most people wondering what happens if king goes to f8 and escapes via e7 seeing as we've got the knight guarding this f6 square and we'll show you that in a second as that's really nice but incredibly here the only move that will stop black getting checkmated is for this bishop to capture this pawn and I'll show you this because it's quite a nice uh, defensive resource as well so we want to protect that h8 square that's the only way of escaping for black here and the move is bishop takes there defending h8 again so we just get rid of the bishop the queen takes here with check and say right okay we'll play we'll play king b1 and then the queen takes a pawn here and it defends h8 there we go so white is still uh, winning and there are a few look even though it's a bishop for three pawns there's a few nice lines that perhaps you could have a look at another time but that doesn't suit the purposes of this video at the moment so we'll go back and we'll end this video with a, a nice little checkmate puzzle so we'll just go on a, a few squares a few squares a few moves first so if the king goes to f8 what happens then looks natural is going to be able to escape king to f8 and the queen comes in and checks and then the king goes to e7 and now from this position there's a forced checkmate so if you want to pause the video and see if you can find it and do that now okay right we'll give the answer now what happens is the knight comes in check only one move recapture here the queen comes to f6 check now if the king goes to f8 we see rook h8 mate so we don't do that we take the queen g takes f6 now notice that if we just take that back again if e takes f6 and a bishop can take there so we keep that pawn blocking that bishop again and we play g takes f6 the king can't go to d7 which has been vacated by the knight because of his bishop so it forces him back to f8 and the rook comes in and the, this pawn's doing the job that the queen was doing before guarding both squares and it's checkmate so a nice checkmating solution at the end of that one so there we go i hope you got something from this video i'll see you again soon